As someone who comes from a predominantly pro-Palestinian part of Sydney, my community has felt betrayed by the government, believing the response has been very one-sided and unfair towards them, as seen when the Opera House was lit up with the Israeli flag. Could the government have been more sympathetic towards Palestinian people at a time of high tensions? Matt. Um, well, I think that we've been a, a government that has been quite progressive uh, when it comes to the rights of Palestinians um, in terms of government policy. Um, we've said in our platform um, that we recognise the right uh, for a Palestinian state to exist behind secured borders. We've changed the language around the uh, Palestinian territories to the occupied Palestinian territories. Um, and we've been very supportive of humanitarian aid to advance the living standards of, of Palestinians. Um, I think most Australians were, were quite shocked and horrified at the brutality of the Hamas invasion. And we've certainly made the point in the parliament that our condemnation was directed to Hamas, the terrorist organisation, not to the Palestinian people, um, who in many respects are innocent victims. Um, in this whole conflict. But so we've if been I very could just draw you to the actual question, which was about, for instance, the Opera House being lit up in the Israeli flag colours. And I, I understand Clover Moore in uh, the Lord Mayor of Sydney has said no to lighting up the, the town hall in those colours. Your colleague again, Ed Husick, mentioned the lighting up in those colours in an interview with me and said that this had been, you know, clearly had upset people. Do you think it was appropriate with the benefit of hindsight? Um, th that's a matter for the New South Wales government. But what government. do you and, think? And that, well, there are guidelines uh, that are put in place for decisions such as that to be made. Um, no, they're not. They're, no, they're not. There, that's there a are, call. There are guidelines. That's ultimately a call, um, though. That, well, there are, there are guidelines um, and those guidelines have to be followed. Um, if we can just put aside that issue for a second, um, I do have a concern about the Opera House increasingly being used um, for particular purposes and means to support uh, particular movements. Um, and a classic example, I think, is that the Opera House has been used to promote a horse race, uh, which directly benefited gambling companies. I don't think that that's an appropriate use of a public building um, where taxpayers' dollars are being expended. So there's a judgment calls. There's a judgment calls, but the guidelines have to be followed. But was it uh, the I right judgment call to light it up in those colours, in your view? Uh, that's a decision for the but New South. I'm <laughs> asking for your opinion. Um, that's a decision for the for the New South. So you well, just won't give me your uh, view. Look, I, I think in the circumstances, um, it was probably appropriate given the 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 expression of support that existed in the Australian community um, for Israel uh, and the motion that was passed um, in the Parliament, but. I think we've got to be very, very, um, uh, very, very uh, discerning about using public buildings, particularly a public building that is devoted to the promotion of arts and culture in Sydney, discerning about using those buildings forever and a day for different causes. Mm. Now, Larissa, I want to bring you in. I mean, uh, many Israelis were murdered and it was horrific what happened to that community. By lighting up the Opera House, that was an act of Australian solidarity to the many people who'd been murdered. Do you understand why it happened in that context? It's symbolism, but I would say people want substantive rights, not pretty lights. And so in terms of lighting up the Opera House in the aftermath of so much shock and grief, but also picking a side when there is an, an incredible outpouring from the Palestinian community trying to grapple with what has happened. But was that a side that was terrorists that murdered a whole lot of Israelis. It was a, it was a terrorist organisation that murdered... I'm not justifying not really what Hamas did, but I'm saying that it goes deeper than just looking at Hamas and their actions. Supporting Israel and, and the work... The things that Netanyahu has done over the last decade, I think his right-wing government, some of the comments they have made, which have frankly been genocidal in the last couple of weeks, of things that they have said about Palestinian people. <laughs> I think what we want to see is not rushing our... not our politicians and our governments rushing to pick a side. What we want to see is negotiations. What we want to see is peaceful resolution. And I think that that inflamed the situation. Uh, it, it caused a whole bunch of tension that 
you know, there's enough grief that was in the community in Australia. We've got lots of Palestinian, lots of Jewish people living in Australia. And I just think it was the wrong thing to do. I think there are many other ways to show solidarity for what was a horrific act. But I don't think in that moment that was the right thing to okay. do. I want to go back to you in a moment, but just get you in, Roger. I mean, a lot has been said about that and clearly some Palestinians felt like their lives were not being counted. I know many Jewish people are pretty concerned that when this happened that it would get such a negative response when so many of their citizens had died. How do you feel? Was it provocative or was it just an act of solidarity? I mean, I'm, listen, I don't have a foot in either camp yeah. and so I don't think it was a... To me, it was a kind of non-issue. I think we have to... One of the things we're doing here at the moment is we're conflating uh, the broader Palestinian issue with the actions of Hamas. And uh, Larissa said Hamas is not Palestine, no. Palestine is not Hamas. That's correct, but Hamas has inserted itself inside Gaza. It's placed against all um, humanitarian law conventions, uh, its headquarters, its uh, missile firing posts inside populated areas. Um, it launches rockets across uh, hospitals uh, within the safety zones of those rockets and we saw what happened when one malfunctioned. Um, so I thought the act of solidarity was with the, the act of solidarity for uh, Israelis against Hamas, not against Palestinians. Mm. And I think people would be do well to understand the difference between Hamas and what Hamas has done and how Hamas has to be uh, dealt with and the broader um, population of Palestinians and the broader Palestinian issue, which is related but separate to what we've seen just happen. Simon, I want to bring you in. Um, how do you feel about the kind of answers you got there? Yeah, um, I'm happy with the answers. I was just like, there's still thousands of people protesting every single day about uh, what's happened, so I would like uh, you to comment on those protesters. Why do you think that they're still angry about the government response? That's a good question. Um, I'll bring you in, Keith. I mean, there are a lot of people on the streets who clearly feel like they're not being seen or understood. And I think words really matter here, and, and I'll help Matt out. It was absolutely the right thing to do. It was, because it was about the fact that 1,400 people had been murdered and Australia needed to show its solidarity. C can you imagine if this happened here in this country and it was 1,400 Australian citizens, what the Australian people would be asking its government to do? C can you just imagine what you would be asking Matt and his government to do in those circumstances? Uh, and in this panel, we've already heard words like war crimes and genocide. It, this doesn't need to be inflated. Uh, and I'll go back to the point I made first up. We have to look at how did the hostages get released? That is the number one priority right now. Uh, and I know isn't that a number, Isn't another priority, though, feeding and giving water to the desperate people who are so desperate? I mean, they're just not getting enough aid. We know that. But, Patricia, no one wants to see the innocent harmed. That They don't. But this is an incredibly difficult position. And I, I, I just can't imagine what it would be like to have that occur here and have people come to me as an MP and the things that they would want us to do and how we would manage it. It's incredibly difficult. But, but I would say we need to be very careful with our language here, incredibly careful, because I take your point. There are a lot of people protesting on the streets and I support their right to do that. Mm. But I don't support their right to use the language that they used a week ago. That is incredibly inappropriate and inflammatory and I think everyone in the community needs to ensure that that stops. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm... Um, um... Many of those other protesters did denounce it. Adam, I'll just let well, you I mean, have I was, to say. I was part of those protests over the weekend and there is a growing global push for peace here. Hundreds of thousands of people are now taking to the streets to say one atrocity does not justify another, right? And we can not, when you stand up in Parliament and pass a motion to back an invasion of an area half the size of Canberra where 2.2 million people are walled in, you're effectively sanctioning an attack on a walled-in primary school and there will be civilian casualties, right? And that's why I think at the moment... And, and you have the United Nations on the ground right now saying not only are the health system on the brink of collapse and they're running out of fuel and people are dehydrating and starving, 
but they're saying the invasion amounts to collective punishment, which is against international law. Yeah. Okay, and we mourn the 1,400 Israelis who died, but 4,000 Palestinians and over 1,400 children have now been killed, and that number is going to grow. Mm. Right, that number is going to grow, and there's there's practical things that we could be doing right now. And this movement for peace that is growing around the world is saying we want our world leaders to sit down, call a ceasefire, get the hostages immediately released and stop the invasion because that is the only way that we're going to stop a humanitarian catastrophe unfolding because it is going to get worse if we keep backing the invasion.